Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be taking a brand new fresh look at the Vulcan backend in a CMU emulator in its current form, its work in progress 12 version, which was just released to CMU's Patreon supporters. As I promised in my last CMU video in which I covered all of the changes in 1.15.15 and 1.15.14, I'm going to be taking a look at how Intel iGPUs, in this case my UHD 630, is running the the most demanding game and some of the most popular games on this emulator. First of all, obviously we're looking at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. First things first, the resolution I am running at is 720p, so basically the base resolution of this title. And as is the case in every single game on the Vulcan backend currently, there are no shader caches, so every time I load into a game, just like I've done for this video, I am not going to have any shader cache, so I'm going to have to compile everything from the beginning. But just look at our performance. It's actually kind of unbelievable that the most demanding title on this emulator by far is able to run at full speed, not using a dedicated GPU at all. It wasn't that long ago in CMU emulator's development history that we weren't even able to reach 30 frames per second using a 5 GHz 7700K, that being paired with an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti, and now we're able to reach the max speed of this game natively at 30 frames per second using an integrated GPU. To be honest, I couldn't actually believe my eyes when I booted into game and saw that I was getting between 35 to 45 frames per second area dependent. For for anybody who's not aware, this area, the Great Plateau, is one of the most demanding places in the game. Later on in the video, I'm going to be showing you how we are performing in other very demanding areas like Kakariko Village, Hateno Village, and also the Hyrule Castle Ruins. But just look at that. 36 frames per second, 38 frames per second, almost 40 frames per second on the Great Plateau. Obviously, we have some graphical bugs, our shadows are a little broken, and there are other issues with particles and the fact that things like falling rain doesn't currently render. This is obviously an issue, but we are only going to see more and more improvements as the days and weeks pass and as this Vulcan backend gets even better. Now, in regards to some of the missing particles like the rain and some of the smoke effects, as far as I know, these are missing because on Intel's latest driver, it does not have support for transform feedbacks. So as soon as that gets added to the driver and you install it, these graphical issues are going to be completely solved. Next up, who doesn't love a bit of Mario Kart 8 and again in this new Vulcan backend not only is this game rendering really really well but at its native resolution of 720p it is also performing absolutely perfectly maintaining a fully locked 60 frames per second at all times that is obviously once we have compiled all of our Vulcan shaders. One of the strangest things I've actually encountered when testing across Nvidia, AMD and Intel is the fact that at least stability wise the Intel GPU seemed to be far more stable across any of the games that actually worked very well. For example, Mario Kart 8, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Wind Waker HD. As I also promised, let's take a look at Super Smash Bros. And unlike in the previous versions on iGPUs, Smash does now boot. However, it does have some fairly strange rendering issues. For example, the selection hand isn't rendered. You can select characters, obviously, but it's just a little bit tricky to do so. Smash on iGPUs is also not currently able to load into gameplay. You can select your characters, select your CPU levels, select your stages, do all that cool stuff. But as soon as you try to load into an actual level, it's just going to freeze on a black screen at 60 frames per second then after about 10 or 15 seconds for me at least it just completely crashed the emulator. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is yet another game that requires and supports transform feedbacks and while it does load into gameplay as you can see by the gameplay displayed we don't have properly rendered or I guess rendered at all character models due to the fact that I'd guess anyway that transform feedbacks is required for their rendering. The game isn't playable at all in its current state as once you go down into the main area on the elevator, the game, similar to Smash, just freezes at 30 frames per second and crashes. Okay, so now back to our main event, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, by far the most demanding game and by far the most requested game for iGPU testing I've gotten in the past few days. And as you'll see, here in Hateno Village, once we've cached our shaders, as with on the Great Plateau, we are also running at full speed 30 frames per second. 
Again, this is just absolutely insane performance levels, running well over 10 to 12 frames per second higher than the OpenGL backend would run on this exact same GPU. Except we're using Vulkan, and unlike with OpenGL, it doesn't take 5 minutes to cache one simple shader. The gameplay, even when we're compiling shaders, is absolutely buttery smooth. You almost don't need a shader cache for the most part when playing this game on Vulkan. Okay, next up we're gonna test out yet another very demanding area. Let's jump to our map screen and head on over to Kakariko Village. Once we arrive, you're gonna see we're gonna cache a load of shaders again, but as with the Great Plateau and Hateno Village, once we do cache those shaders, our performance is absolutely outstanding. In the early days of Simu's development, Kakariko Village was one of my very favorite places to test, and it still remains one of my favorites to this day, but I still just cannot wrap my head around the fact that I'm getting anywhere close to full speed in one of the most demanding areas in the most demanding title on this Wii U emulator. It's just absolutely insane. Okay, so let's now put our iGPU to the test and see what our performance is going to be like in the actual most demanding place in the entire game, the Hyrule Town and Castle Ruins. So how do you like that for performance? 36 to 38 frames per second at the very entrance area of Hyrule Castle? I'm not expecting too much more performance than that, but I am hoping that we can stay somewhere near 30 frames per second at all times. And just look at that, 34, 33 frames per second. It's obviously going to drop down as we cache shaders, as I haven't cached pretty much any in this area just yet, but it is absolutely outstanding the levels of performance we're getting on this integrated GPU in this the most demanding by far a place in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Obviously, we're getting a few drops down to under 30, but that's simply due to the fact that we're caching new shaders we haven't seen before. For the most part, we're staying well above 30, usually hovering in around 32 to 34 frames per second. Pretty damn decent performance considering the GPU we're using. To be honest, the only thing I can say is, well, great job CMU developers, you've done an absolutely outstanding job of implementing a Vulkan so far, and all I can do now is wait to see how much you improve it in future. Can you even imagine getting a locked 60 FPS potentially on an iGPU? I know it might be hard to think of or even see now, but when you remember that just over 15 to 18 months ago we weren't even able to get 30 frames per second on high-end top of the range i7 CPUs paired with top of the range Nvidia GPUs. I don't know about you people, but I can myself definitely see this game pushing close to or at 60 frames per second on integrated hardware. Obviously we're gonna have to wait for a lot more development and optimization work, but the future remains bright for Intel iGPU users and this emulator. Now obviously this was only a rough kind of overview of some of the most popular games you guys requested over the last few days. I wasn't able to cover everything you guys asked for, but if there is anything additional that I didn't show in this video that you want to see tested on either Nvidia, AMD or Intel GPUs, please let me know down below this video in a comment. And and when I do my updated compatibility testing on all GPU vendors and CPU vendors, I will make sure to try and test those games out for you absolutely no problem at all. Again, at the end of this video, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely amazing, helping me to pay for things like my internet bills, power bills, water bills, and every single game I require for testing in all of my videos. So if anybody out there in the community would like to pledge or a donate to help the channel, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below and helping to support. As I always say, these pledges and donations are absolutely not a requirement to get help from me here on YouTube. 
over on my Discord or to test any games that you do request, but they are massively, massively appreciated. So to all of my past, present, and potential channel supporters, thank you guys very, very much. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave it a thumbs up down below. And if you like these kind of performance and analysis videos, please also remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.